Welcome to worship on this Sunday, October 11th, as we continue in our theme, in our exploration of community, and specifically how the miracles of Christ enhance our community, how the miracles of Christ call to each and every one of us to participate in the miracles each and every day. As we have been looking at this theme of community, we also invite you to participate in this community of faith in a variety of ways. First, we invite you to our in-person worship next Sunday, October 18th. At nine o'clock a.m., we will be gathering together in this space to give God our praise and to hear God's word. We would like you to register for that event in advance and you can do so by going online. Another way in which we are experiencing community is in partnership with our global uh, brothers and sisters in Christ in Tanzania. We support Bega Kwa Bega through the St. Paul Area Synod. And at this time, we are uplifting the need for scholarships for those who are in need of education in Tanzania. Again, you can go onto our website at rosevillelutheran.org slash scholarships for more information about how you may participate. And then in our local community, uh, this past month on September 26th, some of you participated in our Keystone Packing event. Over the course of six hours, we packed over seven tons of food and fed over 300 families. Thank you, Roseville Lutheran Church. There's another opportunity around the corner, and again, you can register to participate on October 24th. Again, go to our website to find out how this community of faith is active and alive in everyday miracles. As people gathered to hear the preacher on the boat, so we gathered to hear again the call to discipleship. Like Simon Peter, we acknowledge our faults. Like Simon Peter, we cast aside our doubts. Like Simon Peter, we are caught, caught by the love of God and called 
to follow Jesus. Come as we share the love in worship. Welcome to story time. You know, have you ever been fishing? My dad used to take me fishing and we had a great time together. We would use a rod and a reel, usually live bait, which meant minnows, and we would go out in a boat. Um, I didn't dare to touch the minnows, so my dad would put the bait on the hook for me and I would cast my line out into the lake and hopefully catch a fish. When the fish bit, I loved reeling it in, but honestly, I didn't like taking the fish off the hook either. I guess I wasn't a very good fisherman, but my dad and I had fun together, and it, that, that's what mattered most. In our story today, it's about fishermen that didn't use rods and reels. They used nets, kind of like this one, but they were great big nets. They would throw their nets over their boats, usually at night, because at night, the fish couldn't see the nets. And they, then they would get caught in them. Kind of like, if you've seen the movie Finding Nemo, Nemo gets caught in these nets. That's what it was like when these fishermen would fish. They hoped to catch a lot of fish in their nets. Well, as you know from our other stories, Jesus went around talking with people. And he, in this story, was talking at the edge of a lake. So he looked out at the people. There was a huge crowd that gathered again. And he saw his friends, Simon and Andrew, over a little ways away, who were rinsing out their fishing nets. They were professional fishermen. So he asked Simon, can we use your boat to go out into the lake a little ways so that people can see me a little better? And Simon and Andrew said, sure. So Jesus got in the boat with them and they went out onto the lake a little ways away from the shore and Jesus could talk to the people. When he was done talking to the people, he said to Simon, why don't you guys throw your nets over the side of the boat and catch some fish? Oh my goodness. Simon was so tired. He'd been up all night fishing and hadn't caught a thing. But Jesus asked him to do it, so he threw the net, he and Andrew threw the nets over the edge. And in a little while they looked and they couldn't believe it. Those nets were so full of fish, they couldn't even lift them out. Their friends, fishermen James and John, were in their boat a little ways away and they said, hey guys, come over here, help us. They caught more fish that day than they had in a long time. It was amazing. Then Jesus said something pretty odd to them. Jesus said, I think you should drop your nets and follow me. And instead of fish, you can fish for people. What? Fish for people? What did that mean? Jesus said, you can come with me and tell everybody about how much God loves them and what God can do for them and that God is with them always. You can follow me. So right there and then, Simon, Andrew, James, and John dropped their nets, and instead of fishing for fish, they fished for people. They became disciples. You know what? That's something you and I can do too. We can be disciples of Jesus. We can follow him. We can tell others how much God loves them. Don't you think that'd be great? So we could fish for people too. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your son Jesus. Thank you that we can follow him and teach others about you and about all the amazing things that Jesus did. Help us to be disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you can fish for people.
Our lesson today comes from the fifth chapter of Luke. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they were beginning to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want you to think about, just for a moment here this morning, a time in which you were asked to volunteer for something. It could have been when you were gathered in a group of two or three, or maybe five or 10 or, or even more. And maybe it was a teacher or maybe a pastor, maybe a Cub Scout leader or a friend or another volunteer who said, I am looking for a volunteer. Now the task that you were volunteering for might have been to read something out loud, to answer a question, maybe participate in, in some different way. But I do know this, that as I have asked for volunteers in the past, especially when there is a crowd gathered, as soon as I say, I'm in need of a few volunteers, eyes all of a sudden start to shift down from looking at my face to something else. It could be some lint on the side of your sports coat. It could be all of a sudden a shoe that is magically untied. The thing is, is that many of us are reluctant sometimes to volunteer, especially in those moments when we don't exactly know what the task may be lying ahead. There's a lot of examples of reluctancy within our biblical text. And today's text found here today, as we hear the story of Simon Peter is a good example. And as we are looking through this theme of community and miracles, here we have this miracle of this tremendous catch of fish. And then the calling of Simon Peter to not only catch fish, but be fishers of all people. This is a story, of course, that is familiar to us as it's not only found in the Gospel of Luke, but also Matthew and Mark. Now in Matthew and Mark, there's a few differences to the story. For one, it's a much shorter narrative. And what we have in Matthew and Mark is Jesus coming to the disciples as they're along the shoreline saying, come and follow me. And we are told that they immediately drop their nets without hesitation, without any doubts, without inner, any, any inner conflict, no sense of inadequacy. They drop their nets and immediately they go and follow Jesus. I prefer the Luke text, I guess, for myself, because you can sense that kind of that human sense of inadequacy or human sense of questioning, a human sense of wondering what is being asked of me as Simon Peter responds to his Lord. Simon Peter, at this point in Luke's gospel, already knew who Jesus was. In fact, he had eaten with Jesus. 
Simon Peter had invited Christ into his home and, and Christ had healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. So yes, they already knew each other. And so as Jesus comes to preach along that shoreline and as the crowd is pressing in, I imagine that Jesus looked up and saw Simon Peter coming back from his night of fishing and went to him because he knew him and Simon Peter knew his Lord and said, hey, put me in your boat, captain me out into sea so that I can speak more fully to a greater crowd of people. Now, Simon Peter knew how to fish. He knew how to captain a boat. This was an easy task for him. And so he lets this Lord climb into the boat and he sets out. He knows exactly where to anchor so that Christ can speak to the greatest amount of people. And after Christ is done, I'm sure Simon Peter thought, that's it. My job is done. I volunteered or was told to do something. I guess that I had gifts and capabilities for. I have been fishing all night long. I haven't caught a thing. I want to get back to shore, clean my boat, clean my nets, and go home and rest. But Jesus wasn't quite done. After he's preached to the multitude, he looks at Simon Peter and the other fishermen with him and says, I want you to do one more thing for me. I want you to lower your nets again. Simon Peter is a professional fisherman. Who is this itinerant guy to tell him where to find fish? For one thing, the sun has already come up. The fish can see the nets. That's why you fish in the dark. Nope. But Christ says, I want you to again drop your nets. Simon Peter is reluctant and says, Master, we've already tried that, but okay, with a shrug, as if to say, we'll do it for you. And in this familiar story, we hear of this great catch of fish, so much so that they have to call over another second boat in order to put all of the fish in. And after this huge catch of fish, Simon Peter looks at his Lord and his Lord looks at Simon Peter and says, now I want you, Simon Peter, to go and fish for people. Now Jesus is asking for a volunteer in many ways and, and Simon Peter has this knee jerk reaction that is very biblical, a knee re jerk reaction that says, no, not me. We've heard that same reaction from Abraham and Jeremiah and Moses and even Mary, this explanation of, oh Lord, no, you can't ask me to do that. I don't know anything about fishing for people. This miracle story tells us a little bit about Christ's relationship with us and also our relationship with each other. This miracle tells us that Jesus is asking and seeking out and calling each and every one of us. Just as he looked at Simon Peter in that boat, where Simon Peter was comfortable, the captain of his existence, he says, Simon Peter, this is what I want you to do now. Christ is saying the same thing to us, asking you to use the gifts that have been given, but also to hear the urging and the nudging of Christ, calling you into new waters, new places to be, to proclaim Christ's name. It also tells us a little bit about our relationship with each other. And I want to thank all of those who do the work of this church, the work of faith in the communities in which you live, because we can't do it alone. That great catch of fish, Simon Peter couldn't haul that in all by himself. They needed to call in another boat, more hands, more people to participate, to hear the calling of Christ. And so too do we know that as we live out our mission and vision to love God and neighbor and to, to be a community that's united by grace, we need each other. There's a story, a true story of a woman years ago in Los Angeles, a young woman, who fell asleep at the wheel while she was driving, which caused this enormous accident. 
Now the roads had been slightly open at the time. It was, it was in the evening, not a lot of cars on the road. And as she fell asleep, she crossed over the median, plunged through the bridge rail, and came to rest with only her left rear wheel, keeping her from certain death. She was hanging precariously over this, this bridge span, just by the back left rear wheel. Now, a half a dozen motorists saw the accident and they immediately got out of their car and, and went to go help. And one of the people that uh, stopped had some ropes in his car. And so they went out and they got the rope, they tied it to the back of the car, and about 12 people stood there holding on to this rope keeping her from certain death until the emergency personnel arrived. And then when the emergency personnel arrived with the fire trucks and everything else, they got a ladder out and they bolstered the rest of that car up by a ladder until the tow truck could come. And the tow truck had cables and connectors and they finally got, after two and a half hours worth of work, this woman pulled into safety. The fire chief at the end was interviewed by the local TV and he explained how it took everybody's efforts to, to get this woman to safety. And he said, but the funniest thing was is for two and a half hours, this woman in her car kept out yelling, I can do it by myself. I can do it by myself. I share this story with you because there are so many people in this world who are just hanging on precariously hanging over, maybe an abyss of despair or lost dreams or hope or missed love or whatever the grief may be. They're just trying to hold on. And to the rest of the world, they say, nope, I got it. I can do it. I'm on my own. But we know that's not the case. That each of us are being called to use our specific gifts as a lifeline as a place of connection, as a place to bring that person back into the safety of the solid ground of our faith in Christ. This month, we're starting this new ministry here at Roseville Lutheran Church, specifically geared towards our young adults, ages 18 to 30. Jamie Johnson is coming on board as a life coach, and you may wonder, what exactly is this all about? Our young adults are shouldering a lot of responsibility in this world today. There's a change of relationships that just comes naturally at that age between high school and college or jobs, career. There's this changing climate out there due to COVID as far as the economy and their prospects. There's this stress about what the world is gonna look like when they feel like they have their voice fully being heard. What we wanna do with this new ministry and what we can do with this new ministry is be that lifeline, but also the support, right? That gives them not only the support to stand, but also a platform to speak with their voices because these young adults have things to tell us. They have stories to share and passions to lead us in their way. I think about all of the ways in which the work of our hands come together. Just last month, as I said at the beginning of the service, we, we had seven tons of food here. Seven tons of food that were then parceled out to 300 families to feed them, to support them, to give them that lifeline for yet another day. I see it at work in so many remarkable ways with our care team, with our confirmation leaders, with our students and even our youth, even the youngest who reach out, sometimes into waters that we're not so sure we know anything about, but Christ calls us into anyway. All of us are called, each and every one of us, Simon Peter at first said, I'm not worthy. Abraham, when he was tapped on the shoulder, said, no, no way, I'm too old. Jeremiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, heard the call of the Lord and said, no, I'm too young. Moses, when he was asked to step forward, said, you know what? I don't really speak so well. 
Even Mary, the mother of Christ, said, but Lord, I'm only a woman. Christ hears all of these proclamations of inadequacy or a refusal to participate. But the truth of the matter is, is if you look at the biblical story, if you look at the story of the Christian faith and witness, none of us are perfect. And God still uses us anyway. None of us have all of the gifts. One of the guys had the rope and another one had a ladder and eventually they had the winches and the chains. None of us have everything, but together in community, we have enough. As we were reminded in the miracle of the five loaves and fish, it gets broken and it is dispersed and it is enough. The invitation is there to serve and follow Christ. And just as he said to Simon Peter on the boat, go and be fishers of people, he says the same to you. Wherever you may be at this moment, in your house, on the couch, maybe listening online, he says, hear this invitation. I will equip you with the things you need and will bring others alongside to help in the catching of all of the people in this ministry we are called to, to be fishers of all. We can put up all the excuses in the world, and yet Christ is still standing there. What will your response be? Thanks be to God. Amen.
Gracious God, you are the giver of all things good. From the first breaths of creation, you continue to provide us, for us hope, love, and life. You have woven us to be your people and created community among us. You have performed miracle upon miracle to show for us how great your love is. From the wedding in Cana, where water is turned into wine, we are reminded of the abundance of your blessings. From the miracle of the five loaves and two fish, we are reminded that we bring to you all that is within us. You never turn, us, turn away from us, but instead take our meager gifts and bless them so that we may share our gifts with others. In the healing of the paralytic, you show us your mercy and invite us in not only to receive physical healing, but to be recipients of your forgiveness and your love. On this day, may we hear you proclaim your peace among the storms of life. It is you who is able to calm us, even when it may seem we are drowning. It is you who calls us by name and tells us to look outside of the tempest of our anxiety and misplaced hope into your eyes. For when we do, it is your face we see. It is your voice we hear. It is your promise given to us. Help us listen to your voice each and every day. Help us to not become overwhelmed with thoughts of the future, but as, but as you will lead us and guide us on this day and in all days to come. Today we pray for all people and all nations. Be with us, Lord, and mold us to be a people who are united as a community, a people united by grace. Bless our nation, our leaders, our teachers, our healthcare workers, those who are caregivers and those under your care. Bless them and may they hear the calling that we need not be afraid, for you are present with us in real and remarkable ways. And hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Called to follow, called to care, called to service, May we go from here ready to answer. Called to act, called to listen, called to challenge. May we go from here ready to be sent. With God's blessing, with Christ's calling, with the Spirit's leading, may we go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.